Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again. Today we're going to be discussing the news that Aaron Taylor-Johnson is apparently the frontrunner to become the next James Bond. This, of course, means that we will be coming to the end of Tom Hardy's tenure as frontrunner to be the next James Bond, and it's been a marvellous era, hasn't it? I've really enjoyed what Tom Hardy has done with the role, and he had big shoes to fill coming after the likes of Idris Elba and Tom Hiddleston, but I think he really made the part of frontrunner for the next James Bond his own. Back to the salt mines. Yeah, so load up your salt, folks. The latest casting rumour is that Aaron Taylor Johnson, star of Kick-Ass and Godzilla, impressed Barbara Broccoli at a secret audition at Pinewood Studios and is now thusly the favourite to become the sixth cinematic 00 agent. Him and his wretched gadgets. Okay, seventh. I never really know whether we're counting David Niven's turn in Casino Royale or not. This is, of course, despite Broccoli saying in numerous interviews that the casting search hasn't even really begun yet and they have a lot of figuring out to do before they actually start thinking about who is going to wear the tuxedo next, but that doesn't stop the media, obviously. And how is the search going? It's uh, not going just yet. Why not? <laughs> we have a lot of work to do before we start looking for <laughs> casting the role. I mean, yeah. we have to kind of, you know, reboot the whole series. We have to think about what the storyline is going to be in the trajectory. Hello, am I speaking to the editor? Ah, oh, great, wonderful. No, we got the story straight from Barbara and Michael themselves, straight from the horse's mouth. They couldn't have been more clear on this point. I have it here word for word. They said, we are happy to confirm that Aaron Taylor Johnson is our current favorite. Yeah, they did confirm that Tom Hardy was out of the running. Yeah, so this was an article in The Sun that suggested that Taylor Johnson had already filmed a screen test as Bond as far back as September 2022, according to <laughs> sources and one insider. Well, that's all the confirmation I need. Hello, betting shop. Yes, I'd like to put my entire life savings on Aaron Taylor Johnson being the next James Bond. The insider is quoted as saying, Aaron went for a screen test to be the next Bond in September and producers and Barbara loved him. He is now one of the front runners. So if I hadn't made it clear by now, I'm treating this rather skeptically. Uh, not only because it goes against what the producers have be actually been saying for months now that they haven't even really started. Uh, there are multiple steps to take before they are even ready to start looking that we have no indication of them taking. I mean, the article is predictably scant on any actual evidence, but since then there was also an additional rumour circulating that Taylor Johnson had filmed a gun barrel sequence and that this was going to be used to announce him as Bond in March or April 2023. You know, I'm not sure this is enough salt for the pinch I need. To say we haven't even had an inkling as to who is going to be directing the next Bond film yet, I'm highly unconvinced by any of this. I mean, I'm making the assumption that Eon will follow the same suit as before, and indeed they will engage with writers and potential directors to figure out the creative direction before figuring out which actor is best placed to help fit into that. Barbara and Michael have mentioned that Neil Purvis and Robert Wade are likely to come back as writers, or at least they're going to be hashing out ideas with them for a potential future direction, but there was no confirmation of that. And yeah, there's no reason why they wouldn't break from tradition, I just don't see why they would. I mean, presumably they would need someone to direct Aaron Taylor Johnson and screen tests, so they would be bringing someone in for that, and we haven't heard any rumblings about them, you know, maybe bringing back Martin Campbell to help with this process, or Sam Mendes, or a director that they trust. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very skeptical about this. Though, to the report's credit, Aaron Taylor Johnson has been seen at a Bond event or two over the last couple of months. I mean, he was there at the Sound of 007 night at the Royal Albert Hall. And it's interesting, I suppose that this is agents getting their clients into these Bond events to potentially put them in front of the producers so that, you know, Barbara and Michael might walk away and look at, you know, they might see Aaron Taylor Johnson and think, ah, oh, right, yeah, I'm gonna check a film out or two of his, but I've also seen Will Poulter, when I've seen photos of events and stuff, um, Will Poulter, the actor, he's been at a few of these things too, I know he was at the Omega uh, Watch event in London, I saw he was um, photographed uh, going into that event, and I do find it interesting that you have these actors who are presumably being either invited by E or put there by their agents to get in front of these people, but it, it is, um, it, it's an interesting insight into some of the process that goes on, I guess. And yeah, you know what, I'm not discounting the possibility that Aaron Taylor Johnson is a massive Lulu fan and he was actually there. Specifically, he, you know, waited online to buy his ticket like the rest of us so that he could see Lulu singing The Man with the Golden Gun live on stage, but I 
you know, perhaps I, I'm even more skeptical about that than I, than I am about him being the next James Bond. As ever, I know that the media and the tabloids really like to make a big, like it's this secret underground thing that goes on and it's all very mysterious and we're gonna see white smoke coming out of the roof of the MI6 building and the next James Bond will be announced that way, but in reality, the first rumblings we hear about the next Bond film are probably gonna be very dull, <laughs> you know, accountants registering companies or there'll be news that a certain stage at Pinewood has been reserved for Eon Productions for a week and therefore we will hypothesize that, okay, well, they're probably going to be using it for the for the screen tests. It, it's probably going to be something a lot sort of unsexiness <laughs> like that that gives us an inkling as to who the next Bond is going to be rather than it being some big, you know, curtain drop moment. But much like Tom Hardy and Idris Elba articles before it, the Taylor Johnson stuff has really been sort of doing the rounds on social media and whatnot, so there have been a lot of people putting their opinions out there. So I figured, well, okay, maybe, maybe I should as well. And I think that the, the thing that really fascinates me about Aaron Taylor Johnson, the possibility of him being James Bond in particular, is that whenever these articles come out, inevitably, and this is me speaking purely anecdotally, I will see on likes of Twitter and social media and stuff, people will you know, be in very firm camps about like, oh yeah, that's a great idea, or oh no, that's a terrible idea, and I'm talking about Tom Hardy, uh, Tom Hiddleston, Idris Elba, people in both camps. The reaction that I've seen for Taylor Johnson so far has been almost uniformly positive, and it makes sense to a degree. I think he is generally a very well-liked actor. I don't see people raging against him in any way, and he has had big roles in the Avengers series, obviously, and then he was kick-ass. I think that's what I certainly first knew him for, but then he's also been in more drama kind of stuff. Anna Karenia and Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging for your teen comedies, so he's got a very varied career. But I think other than kick-ass, he's yet to have his kind of big star-making role, and James Bond could very well be that. Now there is a potential complication for this, as he is already attached to some kind of franchise, I guess, whatever Sony are doing with the Spider-Man franchise, um, but he is going to be Craven the Hunter. Yeah, if you're like me and you don't keep up with your superhero stuff, you have no clue what that means. And yeah, he is apparently signed on to play the character in sequels, should that first one be a success, so I guess that that could be a potential complication. Would Eon be willing to share their new star with another franchise? I mean, this is the same company that initially dropped Pierce Brosnan as James Bond because his TV show got renewed for another season. And yeah, I guess, you know what, yeah, times have changed, and maybe if they like an actor enough, they will overlook such things. I mean, there's no reason why Daniel Craig couldn't have potentially had more than just the Bond franchise on the go. I mean, he was in Cowboys and Aliens, and I mean, if that film had been more of a financial and critical success, maybe they would have made more, and maybe Daniel Craig would have gone on to be known as... What was his character's name in Cowboys and Aliens again? Jake Lonergan? Lonergan? And then he was obviously in the go of the Dragon Tattoo as well, and again, maybe if that had made more money, that would have gone on to be another franchise that he would have been involved in, so maybe after the experience with him, Eon are less bothered about potentially sharing with another franchise. Speaking personally, the thought of Aaron Taylor Johnson as James Bond is one that I could really get behind. I really like this actor. I've seen him in plenty of films, and even though some of the films themselves might not have been all that great, he has always been a constantly great presence in all of them. I think he is exactly the kind of person you can see that he, you know, very much has that physicality. It's kind of classy and cool, but he's also a little rough around the edges, which is kind of perfect, that Sean Connery, Daniel Craig kind of quality, but then, you know, he's, like I say, this diverse career that he's had, lots of dramas and that kind of stuff. I think that he could, you know, be more than capable of bringing some some good emotion to the part, similar to how Daniel Craig did. I think he is something of a complete package, to be perfectly honest, in terms of just looks, his filmography, where he is in his career, his age, like, yeah, I, I, I find it hard to see any negatives in this particular casting idea. But do I think he filmed a screen test? No. Do I think he filmed a Bond gun barrel sequence? No. And as always, I'm more than happy to be proven wrong on all of this. Maybe I will be eating these very words. You can come back to this video and call me an idiot in the comments section below in March or April 2023 if indeed we have 
a gun barrel sequence with Aaron Taylor Johnson walking across the screen, turning, shooting, and saying, hey, I'm going to be James Bond. Great, fine, I would be more than happy with that. But I do think that all of these reports are kind of a nonsense. Just based on what Eon have been saying, I don't think that they've been treating 2022 as anything other than a bit of a victory lap of the entire franchise, a lot of the 60th anniversary celebrations and all that. So I don't really have a reason to not believe them when they say that, oh yeah, we've not actually really started with this. I think that 2023 is probably when they will sort of knuckle down and maybe we'll get something by the end of next year, um, an idea of what the shape of the next era of Bond is going to look like. But as I say, before we get to the next Bond himself, I think that we have more boring <laughs> information to come out, like, oh, Eon Productions have reserved studio space at Pinewood for six months, or, uh, you know, whatever. But I think I think it's very much likely that writers, Neil Purvis and Robert Wade, will be announced. I think a director more than likely would be announced and that these people would be helping shape what the next era of Bond is going to look like. And only then will they start looking at, okay, who is in this space at the moment that can really fit that bill? Maybe, sure enough, maybe they will look at Aaron Taylor Johnson and think, yep, he is the exact guy for right now. And like I say, I wouldn't be disappointed with that, but I do think we're a, a little ways off that yet. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of Aaron Taylor Johnson potentially being the next James Bond, or indeed if you think there's any truth to any of these rumours, articles that we've been talking about. Uh, whilst, like I say, I don't think that there's necessarily been a screen test and a gun barrel sequence being filmed and all that, maybe he has had a meeting with Barbara and or Michael at least, I could totally see that being more of a possibility. Also below you can click the subscribe and Mrs. Bell notification button to stay super up to date on future video uploads that I make on this channel. There's also links below to my various social medias so please do check those out if you're so inclined and with all that being said and until next time Bond fans, so long for now.